on GoSuffolkRams.com. From Boston, Massachusetts, welcome to Suffolk Sounds, the official show for Suffolk University Athletics. Hello, everyone, and welcome into an ep- another episode of the Suffolk Sounds podcast. This is episode 29, and it's a very special one as we welcome in two of our new athletic trainers to the Suffolk Athletic Department, those being Sam O'Brien and Anna Orfanides. Uh, they joined me this morning. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming on. Uh, it's been great to have you both uh, join the department so far as we are all three Springfield grads. Um, Sam, you graduated from Springfield in 2012, Anna in 2018, uh, and both of you have gone on from there and even prior to there have worked uh, in the athletic training world um, and beyond. So I, I'd like to get to know a little bit more about your journeys um, to Suffolk, if you don't mind, from Springfield on. Uh, we'll start with Anna, if you want to introduce yourself to this uh, Ram Nation. Uh, hello, Ram Nation. I'm Anna. Um, I graduated in 2018 from Springfield College, like Nick said. Um, from there, I went on to China and I lived there for a year and I worked for the Chinese Olympic Committee um, with women's ice hockey. Um, and then I had the opportunity to get my master's degree and I came back to the States and went to Connecticut at Sacred Heart University. And I was there for the past two years and I got my MBA. And then I decided I wanted to stay in collegiate athletics and find something a little less stressful. And Suffolk was amazing and had a great opportunity for me. So here I am. And Sam, how about a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Uh, what's up, Ram Nation? Sam O'Brien here. Uh, similar to you and Anna, I also, as you said, graduated from Springfield College in 2012. Uh, from there, I went on and had the opportunity to get my master's degree in advanced um, rehab techniques from the University of South Carolina. Uh, as a graduate assistant, I worked with the football team down there, Gamecock Nation, uh, from 2012 to 2013. Uh, and then my second year in grad school, I actually had the opportunity to work with a, a very vast club in rec sports uh, program. There, They have like, like 17 uh, athletic teams. So I worked with them my second year down there. And after graduating, I want to come back home. I'm a New Englander at heart. So I said, I, I'm going to move back to Mass. And I worked at Linfield High School. It's where I landed, uh, 2014 to 17 ish. Uh, it was at the head athletic trainer at Linfield for three years. And then after that, I want to get back in the college setting, a little bit more competitive uh, athletic standpoint. And I worked at Dean College. And that, that's where I was for the past three years down at Dean and Franklin, Mass. Uh, and then afterwards, I, I just, I knew how Suffolk had a great reputation. And I, Ever since I stepped foot on, on campus here, uh, for everybody I've met, I've loved every interaction that I've had. So it's been great. Um, and that's, I started up here. Yeah, Sam, so far since you've been here, you've been working primarily with the women's soccer team, um, which I'm sure has been going great for you. I've seen you at some cross country events as well. I'm just helping out with all 19, both of you are helping out with all 19 um, um, sports here at Suffolk University. Um, Sam, going back to your um, time with the club sports at um, excuse me, at USC, that must have been very intriguing um, to work with that side of athletics after working with, you know, the varsity sports for so long. Uh, I myself was a club sport athlete. I saw that you worked with the club hockey team. What was that experience like for you to gain that perspective? Uh, it's a little bit different feel than, than the D1 level that's down there, but I'm sure it was, was very worthwhile. Oh, absolutely. And <clears throat> like you said, I mean, club sports, you, it's, it's a different, different commitment so to speak, it's a different level, but but the level of uh, of athletes you get there is, is definitely nothing to to overlook. The, the competitiveness of D one hockey it's it's basically you, you get some athletes that are looking for you know the school was a better fit but didn't necessarily have the program that they were looking looking to participate in um, at the NCAA level. But you're you're still getting you know you're gonna we're working with top tier athletes, and um, it, was, it was obviously it was a great. Uh, experience for me it definitely helped me push my clinical uh skill set forward big time because you're working with with the hockey players one day and then i'm gonna then I'm, I'm covering a flag football day the next day and you have weekend warriors who think that they're they're trying out for usc's varsity team every single practice uh so in terms of of my how my practice is affected I, i'm coming in i don't know if i'm gonna have to treat you know two acl tears one day 
um, head injuries, all sorts of lacerations, just the, the variety of injuries that you see is never ending. And as a second year grad student, obviously I'm, I'm certified for two years. I'm still relatively new in the profession at that point. And it's really, it really was trial by fire in terms of me being able to, to diagnose form rehab plans for 20 athletes in a given day. I mean, it, we had a staff of three, so it wasn't like I was being overworked, overwhelmed. We worked well with each other, but uh, just the, the level of appreciation that you get from club athletes is, is great. I, I mean, they're there just like everybody trying to hone their craft, get better every single day. And, and the fact that they can set up an appointment and, and have someone there to look after their, their physical status and, and, and their health, they are just beyond grateful. And it, it really helped me build, you know, my resume and, and my confidence as, as an athletic trainer early on in my, in my AT um, profession. So it's definitely an experience I'll never forget. I recommend all young athletic trainers that I talk to, if they go to a university that has that opportunity to jump in it, because you, you learn right on the fly. And it was, it was an awesome experience. That sounds like some great advice, Sam. Uh, both of all three of us lived the GA life, uh, as Sam just mentioned. Anna, you did as well when you were at Sacred Heart University. But before that, um, what's intriguing to me is that you went over to China um, for a full year and worked with the Olympic Committee over there, as you mentioned prior. Um, what were both of those experiences like and what brought you back to the States? It's hard to say one word that's going to describe what China was and how the experience went. There was good times. There was bad times. There was you know, crazy things that I saw and things that I did. And then on the flip side, it was, you know, also really relaxing and kind of similar to home. So um, working with the Olympic athletes uh, is a whole other beast um, other than, you know, I've worked with D3 athletes, high school athletes, um, Olympic now, division one athletes. So across the board, athletes are all the same. They love they're always into, you know, wanting, they're all the same. They love, they love getting help. They love the help that you give them. And they're always appreciative, no matter what age they are, where they come from, what language they speak, what they look like. Everyone is, they're always thankful for the help that you can provide them. Um, when I was in China, it was a little more difficult just because I don't, I didn't speak Chinese when I got there. And I also had to incorporate traditional medicine into the Western medicine that I learned. Um, and I was coming right off the bat from school. So everything was fresh in my mind and I wanted to do it one way. And then I was like, oh, wait a second. I need to take a step back, learn something new, take new um, experiences in and then provide the best care for the athletes that I was seeing. Um, my day there was 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., six days a week. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. I loved, I loved my time there and I'm very thankful for everything that I was doing there. Um, my athletes, I miss them a lot. So if they're listening to this podcast, I miss you. The reason did you why end up, I, Anna, did you end up yeah. learning any, did you end up learning any? Chinese? Oh yeah, I can, yeah. I can do a whole evaluation in Mandarin. Wow. Um, yeah. That don't ask me how to get to the bus station or like <laughs> how to order any food because I can't, oh, but I can, you know, I can pretty much, I can figure out what's wrong and give you a little bit of a treatment plan. Um, but I would need some assistance from Google Translate or Instagram. But I can, I can hold my own. Definitely understandable. Definitely understandable. <laughs> uh, and so far here at Suffolk, you've been working with the women's volleyball team uh, primarily. Mm -hmm. How's that experience been for you so far? And as we, you know, inch closer to the next seasons, uh, what are you looking forward to as your time at Suffolk continues? Um, the volleyball team is great. I love working with them. They are energetic and ready to perform and do well. Um, I'm really excited for what this season has to hold. Um, we just had our first TCC game yesterday. So I hope that this weekend is going to be even better. Um, and I am looking forward to working with them for the rest of the season. I'm looking forward to continuing the experiences like just gaining more experience and being able to bring what I have learned from all of the different places that I've been and being able to incorporate it here and not only incorporate my skill set as an athletic trainer, but also my leadership and um, my, I got my MBA. So <laughs> business administrative stuff as well into this wonderful athletic training department and our athletics department as a whole.
And Sam, uh, you've been working with Anna and Rick very closely now throughout the semester so far um, with the women's soccer team as well, uh, with Coach Ashley and, and all those student athletes. So what's that experience been like for you? And same thing, what are you looking forward to as the year goes, as the year rolls on? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been exactly what I was hoping it would be. It's been awesome. I uh, love working with the team. They're obviously they're high energy. They're very well coached, for sure. That's probably the biggest thing that stands out to me from, you know, Obviously, as an athletic trainer, you, you notice that sort of thing. They're organized. They, they, they come in with a plan uh, to, to get better every day and they're ready to execute. So that's obviously very refreshing to see where it, it helps, you know, it helps our end, too. And we are trying to incorporate, you know, rehab programs and, and treatments and with practice and to, to know what's going, you know, a very set practice it makes it easier on our end, too. Uh, but, yeah, excited for more opportunities on campus. Um, in terms of what I'm looking forward to, I mean, playoffs are always fun. Um, I, I definitely, in terms of on-campus standpoint, to get involved more so in on-campus uh, like activities and events. I know there's a lot going on around here that that it really hasn't been an, uh, much of an option for other places I've been. Uh, so to be more involved in that, I'm, I'm looking forward to as the semester kind of tr chugs along a little bit and time might open up to be able to do some of that sort of stuff. So. That's what I'm excited to get into. Anna, I'm looking to know a little bit more about you and your athletic training uh, mindset and your philosophies. What what are some of the philosophies that you bring into work every day? You know, whoever walks through that door, they're getting treated equally and with the same amount of care and respect that I would treat anyone else. And I would hope that people would treat me. Um, I love what I do. I love my job. Um, and I hope that that translates into my care for the athletes and, you know, my everyday practice. Sam, how about you? Uh, just taking care of everybody that comes through that, that door and, uh, you know, listening to what they have to say and, and coming up with a, a formulated plan to, to help treat whatever they may be dealing with on a daily basis. Um, obviously we, we need to be, we're, we have open door policy, uh, our big thing is just being very accessible to every athlete and, and knowing that if they, if they ever need anything, you know, we're always open to whatever, whatever they need to try to help them. Um, overcoming an injury, uh, re specific rehab in terms of strength and conditioning, trying to, to strengthen up certain areas in the weight room. Like we're, we're always a resource for them to utilize. And we hope that they, I mean, I think, yeah, they, they're comfortable coming to us with any sort of questions and issues is the main point. Um, but obviously also, you know, when you're an injured athlete, a lot of it is responsibility on yourself. You're, you're, you're here to have home exercises, to stick to the treatment plans and, and work on getting better. Um, we can only do so much when we're in the training room. A lot of it is, is accountability and, and making sure that you're doing what needs to be done outside of it also. But it's really just Treating everyone with respect and, and working together, it's it's a, a two-sided coin. You know, it you need to, to be able to work with with an athlete and, and coaches and everybody in in the on the team to be able to move forward and get things done. So definitely a team first approach is important to me. Yeah, how how important are those relationships with the student athletes that you especially the ones that you directly work with, but the whole athletic department as a whole, how important is it to just establish a good connection with them and be able to um, you know, really reach them. Um, Cause you mentioned, you know, you have to go home and put in the time. You can't just come to the training room to, to do that. So you need to be able to know that person and know their strengths and weaknesses. Um, so Anna, what, what do you think about that? Um, I think a lot of it comes from being, you know, adept at reading people. You need to know, you know, when someone's going through a bad day, like not only are we here for your physical health, we're also here for your mental health. We're here for your spiritual health we're here for everything spirit mind and body if we're going to quote spiritual college nothing works well if you don't work together you're only as strong as your weakest link and that goes with rehab that goes with you know how you're feeling every day on a day-to-day -day basis and um, with the team that you surround yourself with and here in uh, the Suffolk University Athletics Department we have a great team of people who all are play integral integral roles and we do the best we can to provide the best care for our athletes and for our staff members. 
Awesome. Well, thank you both for joining me today. Uh, it's been really great to get to know you guys a little better. And hopefully Ram Nation has a little bit more sense of who you are, especially these winter and spring athletes who haven't had as much time to come in and meet you guys. So really happy to have you guys on this morning. Thanks, awesome. Zach, for having, having us. This has been Suffolk Sounds. Don't forget to subscribe, like, rate, and review however you listen to your podcast.